you don't want to be a flyer, you're not going to be a flyer. And just like that, guys, we got our first blockbuster of the season and a very surprising trade that saw the Philadelphia Flyers trading Cutter Gothi to Anaheim Ducks in exchange for Jamie Drysdale in the second round pick. If you guys are like me, you're probably shocked by this. I didn't hear either of these players' names in any trade rumors. But apparently a few months after last year's draft, Cutter Gothi actually told the Flyers he didn't want to play for them. Here you can see Danny Briere talking about that a bit more. Looked at us at the draft and told us he was built to be a flyer, wanted to be a flyer, and then a few, maybe a few months later, told us that he didn't want to be a flyer, didn't want to play for the Flyers. So, so after hearing Briere say that, it makes a lot of sense why they decided to trade him now. He had a very solid World Junior performance, putting up 12 points in seven games to the Americans. Also, of course, winning a gold medal. Jamie Drysdale is a very solid young defenseman. It's actually like a pretty decent return. My initial reaction looking at this trade is honestly, it's a fair trade for both teams. I think the Flyers need defense more than the Ducks do, at least in terms of futures. Reason being, I'll show you guys right now, the Anaheim Ducks kind of stacked on Young D. You got Pavel Mintikov currently in the NHL looking pretty good. Olin Zellerger's coming up. You got Drysdale, of course, just traded. Tristan Leno, there's another solid young defenseman. If you guys didn't know, Leno, Zellerger, Mintikov, actually all won Defenseman of the Year in their respective CHL league. So Mintica was the best defenseman in the OHL last year, Zelliger best defenseman in the WHL last year, and Leno was the best defenseman in the QMJHL last year. I don't think that's ever happened before where like all three award winners were on the same team. So the fact that Ducks still have those three guys, even after getting up Drysdale, kind of shows you that, you know, they're set for the future in terms of defense. And even after those three, they got a lot of other young, solid defensive prospects, Noah Warren, Drew Hellison, Tyson Hines, like honestly, they are set. Now the Ducks must have felt that Carter Gothier was actually like the higher end player as with Drysdale. They're also adding a 2025 second round pick. Hopefully for their sake, they're not as bad next year, but this could definitely be like a high second, just like their 2024 second round pick's gonna be. They're currently a bomb three team right now with the Blackhawks and the Sharks. Now, if you look at it here, guys, you can see Flyers are actually interested in both of these. As I mentioned, Drysdale's a solid young defenseman. You can see there, 21 years old, 79 overall, mediumly potential, with sixth overall pick back in 2020. So a couple years older than Cutter Gothe because of that, already signed a new contract. 2.3 million though for three years, I think is very good. If you can actually take that next step next season, even the season beyond, the Flyers have a very good contract if they actually compete. I will say, do not expect anything from them this year. Torella has really turned that team around. In terms of why Cutter Gothe didn't want to play for the Flyers, it's really all speculation. Nobody knows. Penguins are definitely my favorite team growing up. I was recently drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers, and I don't think that's going to roll over well. Who is your favorite player growing up? Oh, it's got to be Sidney Crosby. I don't know if it has to do with, you know, Torrell being the coach now. I'm trying to think, like, what's changed since he got drafted. But as you can see, Drysdale hasn't really put up insane numbers, but we know he's got the potential. I think he's got a, you know, high ceiling there in terms of what he can be as an offensive defenseman in this league. So I think the Flyers did pretty good work considering the fact that they had to trade Gauthier and get something for him, as if they didn't, with the way the rules work, he could have just stayed in college and eventually become a free agent, signing anywhere he wanted, and the Flyers would have actually got nothing in return. So you look at Gauthier here in-game, 1976, medium lead, of course, unsigned, can play wing, can play center, power forward, doesn't show here, but former fifth overall pick back in 2022. I feel like, honestly, this is a really fair trade for both teams. I think even one for one, it would have been pretty fair, so the fact the Flyers also get back a second round pick, it's going to work out pretty well for them. The fact too, that they're actually in the playoff race right now means that Drysdale can immediately help them out. Whereas Gauthier at best would have been joining the team like at the end of the season, started the playoffs around the same time like Matthew Nyes joined the Leafs last year. So in that regards, the Flyers do get a little bit of help early. And again, I think the Ducks have enough defensive prospects. This trade makes a lot of sense for them. So we'll see here, like the value's on our side because of the second, because of the equal value. Do the Flyers pull the trigger on this one? Again, as always guys, for my trades and videos, I got the difficulty set to medium and they say yes. Okay. So Cutter Gothi is now an Anaheim Duck. Interesting. And now after that trade, guys, here's an update look at the Ducks team. And I'm actually trying to predict what their four group might look like next year, opposed to right now. So they're honestly going to be so nasty in the future. Like this top four core here, Zegers, Carlson, McTavish, Gauthier. It's incredible. You could even play all four of these guys at center if you wanted to, but I think it makes a lot more sense to just have them all in your top six. You've also got Troy Terry there rounding up the first line. But Toronto in the second has been great for the Ducks this season. Third line there, Strom, Lundstrom, Kalorin's not bad at all. Um, Henrique is a pending free agent, so probably going to come back next season, but you never know. Defensively, right now, not looking that great. They do have Mintikov there, but like I mentioned, they got a ton of really good young defensemen coming up. So like I said, I don't think it'd be too hurt losing Drysdale. Also, too, guys, I'll give you your first look at Cutter Gothe as a member of the Anaheim Ducks. Now, he is a custom player, so we're basically just looking at, like, the jersey, the number. I should mention, too, Troy Terry already wears number 19, which is Gothe's number, so... I'm predicting he'll probably wear 91 as a duck. Just kind of makes the most sense to me. So you guys can see him there. Actually, it shows the number he does want to wear, which is number 19. So go with the 19 of the ducks. Like I said, it'll probably be 91, but there you go. Next, we'll try this trade from the Flyers' perspective. 
and see what the Ducks say. And so right here, you guys can see that the Ducks apparently aren't interested in Gothe, which doesn't really make sense. Like, they're a rebuilding team. How do you not want a top prospect? But they apparently also don't want Michka. It doesn't really make sense to me. Now, they do have their second round pick on the block. Drysdale, though, is not. The value's on their side at medium difficulty. I'm pretty sure there's no way they say yes. And yeah, trades rejected. So in-game, EA feels like the Flyers won this one as the prospects are pretty equal value, plus they're getting the second round pick. As I mentioned, though, I do think Cutter Gothe probably has a bit higher value coming off the World Junior. Drysdale's been pretty messed so far to start his career. If you guys are, you know, into analytics at all, his analytics are not great, but I do still like his ceiling. So I think Drysdale in the second for Gothe, like I mentioned, is a pretty fair trade. And yeah, guys, like I was saying, as you can see here, if you try the trade one for one, the Ducks do say yes. So I think the game just thought, you know, fair trade, one for one. The Flyers getting the second round pick for free pushes it on their side. And now look at the Flyers roster after that trade, guys. Obviously, no change to the forward group. I will say that I'm honestly so impressed with how well they've done this season. I think at the beginning of the year, I predicted them to be a bottom five team. And they've really just surprised me. I think a big part of that's probably Tortorella's coaching. As well, too, a lot of young players have stepped up. You look at the Tyson Foresters, the Bobby Brinks, Sean Couturier returning to this team after injury. Obviously, them getting a first line center back is a huge return as well. So between that, young players stepping up defensively too like it wasn't really that great so I've got Drysdale plugged in on the second line York and Sandheim's been a pretty solid top pair for them but it is two lefties so maybe they'll switch it up do something like that so you have the two lefties on the left side now Drysdale Walker there on the right wrist line and still is your bottom pair of course too they got Carter Hardy's been playing pretty well I'm really impressed with the Flyers team I'm curious to see how Drysdale will do joining that team how they're going to use them but I do think you know he has potential to be a great offensive defenseman with that team. But finally here, guys, I'll give you your first look at Drysdale as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers. And one last thing I just want to say, on Twitter, I saw a bunch of Flyers fans saying how Cutter Gothe, like, shouldn't be allowed to, you know, demand a trade from the Flyers, and you should have to, like, stay with the team that picks you or not play anywhere. And I gotta think that these are, like, 12-year-olds who never heard about Eric Lindros refusing to play for the Nordiques and then getting traded to the Flyers. I just thought that was kind of funny seeing it online. But, but here you go, guys, your first look at Jamie Drysdale as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers. You can see there, number six. Most likely the return number 34, as I believe, Sandheim wears six, but there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, let me know in the comment section which team you think won the trade. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.